get it done now. No joking, no waffling, yeah. no side shows, no frills, no thrills. It's bare bones. Yeah. I'm a serial borrower. Hello, Africa. You're welcome to another opportunity to learn and grow with other people's journeys. This is the Legacy Project by Mr. Jex Africa. My guest today has impacted Africa in many ways, right? He was the executive director of the Africa Leadership Forum, and he, he has consulted many bodies, the European Union, uh, African Union, United Nations, and uh, to mention a few. He's currently the chairman of the board of one of the largest superstores in Western Nigeria, hence West Africa, Just Right Limited, a business that employs close to 10,000 staff. He is none other than Mr. Ayo Adirinwali. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's an honor to also be invited to Lord. fellowship with you. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I must put it out there. I've, I've been a fan of his for long before I met him. So I think it's a privilege to have, to have him here. All right. So, sir, we'll dive right into it. Many people here know Just Right Limited. Yeah. I know you have other businesses that s many people will know the names but don't know that you probably own or are a part of. So, but we'll ask, the popular one is Just Right Limited. Mm. I, I have many questions to start with, but this has been boggling the mind of quite a number of people, mm. which is in the midst of fierce competition, mm. you started Just Right. Mm. First of all, why? Why Just Right? Mm. Well, that's a, it's an interesting question. It, it, it's also because, I, I'll tell you the story. Yes. Um, between 1995 and 1998, I was living in Accra, Ghana. Yeah. I was in exile in Accra, Ghana. I see. And my boys, my little, my two boys were with me, uh, Doni and Damola, and we, at some point, were living in Osu, Ari, and we used to trek to uh, the supermarket. And so, so when we came back to Nigeria, uh, to do grocery shopping then. And then we came back to Nigeria. We're back in Otter. Okay. And in Otter, you couldn't get quality grocery to buy, I really. Um, if you needed anything, really. Um, you had only the uh, standard mom and pop shop, and then you have the small little provision store. Yeah. That's all you had in Otter. You couldn't get any really serious quality drink or grocery to buy. Yes. We used to drive every week to Allen Avenue. There used wow. to be a supermarket there called M1 or so, if I remember the name very well. Uh, we'll do the shopping there, and thereafter, we'll go to Pinto's okay. to buy ice cream and uh, meat pie. And so we were doing that, and one day, one fateful day, we're coming back. I can't remember what may have triggered the discussion in the car. Okay. And if we're doing this, this is really stressful. Why, how come we can't even start something like this? Why don't we start, okay, it was first, why don't you start an ice cream parlor? Okay. You're selling ice cream. Or if you're going to sell ice cream, then you have to sell this. Then you have to sell uh, Cocoa Pops, and you have to sell this. And somewhere along the line, the discussion, went in the direction of why don't you start a supermarket? Yeah. And I said, well, it's not a bad idea. And then we got home that day, before daybreak. Yes. The name Just Right came up. Came up before daybreak. So my job the next morning was to look for location. And I remembered my late friend, Kunle Ola, uh, Ola Jiri Omi Kunle, mm. God bless his wonderful soul, who who used to be my mentor when it comes to business and, okay. and, and stuff like that. So I went to him and he said, yeah, he could, I could lease. He has a premises I could yes. lease. Um, he has a mosque that he was no longer using. He said I could um, use as part storage. 
he advised me to build additional storage behind the place he leads to me yes and then we use the upper part somewhere as a boutique and so and there we were um we had the premises yes we didn't have money i see you're just back from exa yeah i mean i'm working uh, i'm yeah. working already okay uh, it's been I came back 98 i'm talking 2000 okay a year 2000 two years after but we didn't have money there used to be an Igbo trader I've forgotten his name now that i knew had helped yes uh sometimes ago so i called him like do you know what i need air conditioners uh could you i need air conditioners i need the cash i needed a cash register i wanted closed circuit tv um but i don't have money wow. can you sell to me on credit and he says yes what did you do for this evil trader before that he could give you you had this i i'm interested well, it, it wasn't a bit of a jam i, I okay. think he had issues he, he couldn't get a visa or something okay. like that I okay. and i stepped in i called up the ambassador and helped him and he got and he was okay. so okay he, you know again then i called him and then he gave me all that then there was Ben Road, the carpenter, uh, who I <laughs> called, and I said, listen, I need you to make shelves. You know what? I'll give you only 40% of your money now. I'll pay you the rest. So he did. Wow. So the narrative is true. Like, it started as a small yeah, store. Yeah, it, um, it started as a mom and pop store, kind of, so wow. to speak. And so the, the, the only thing was that we knew very well two things. We knew what was missing. Hmm. One? One, we needed to provide high quality grocery high quality grocery. grocery to people to the discerning residents of Porta. yes that's number one we needed also to provide a very conducive and convenient shopping atmosphere where you didn't need to haggle and so basically we understood a little bit of trading uh, the rest uh, is learning by doing hmm. uh, the most important thing in life is a belief in your own ability. And because we're selling the type of things that you would not readily find elsewhere, we were addressing pent up demand. Yes. So how, how, long, how long between the time you decided that drive to Lagos, when you were talking about the idea, how long between that time and when you started? If you know me very well, ah. once that thing happened i wasn't yes. going to sleep i know i know the you. next day i was in kuliola's office in wow. Ibukweju. get it done now it's got to be you see ideas are like that they're in the hair they're traveling yes. once you trap it yes you got to work on it almost immediately Ooh. you don't it's, joke with it you got to trap your ideas by it's, doing if it comes you know you don't have to do it in the most elegant manner. Yeah, MVP, minimum viable product. Just push it. Just go. Just go. You, you, it, other things will catch up with you. And so we pushed, and we pushed, and we started. And OK, we made shelves, painted it white, put the cash register, put the thing. Boom, we're in business. Wow. Are you able to pay all the people that you took stuff from? Of in course. Credit? We, up till today, we've grown that business purely by senior debt. Wow. That's from, from, from your banks. vendors, yes. Yeah, we mean, no, banks. Borrowing okay. from banks. Borrowed locally. We borrowed offshore. Interesting. Okay. And you've been, definitely, for you to keep uh, having access to the loans, yeah. you must have been paying. No, you have to pay. I mean, when we took the offshore facility, for instance, overnight, Inter uh, like exchange rate was uh, the naira was devalued by over a hundred percent. My God! As at the time we we're taking the money, exchange rate was a hundred and fifty. By the time it was time to pay back within the nine months to one year moratorium that we had to start to pay back, exchange rate was three hundred and four and climbing. <sighs> and so we had thirty-seven short months to pay. What was going through your mind this period? Nothing other than <laughs> lesser focus. Mm. No joking, no waffling, yeah. no side shows, 
No frills, no thrills, it's bare bones. So people are afraid of taking loans, right? And that is yeah, people because they have backstories. They, you, is, if not for this point you mentioned, I probably wouldn't have asked this. Well, what would you say about loans, taking loans? I know loans are just tools, right? They are neither positive nor negative. It's what you use them for. But at what stage will you say a person should start, you know, vying for loans? For me, I will step back. I, I disagree with you that it's neither negative nor positive. <laughs> it is positive. It is positive. My, for me, where I'm sitting. Yeah. I'm a serial borrower. I have borrowed at <laughs> incredible rates. I, what I did with the African Leadership Forum to build the Secretariat, I built that place without putting one red cent on the table. I borrowed, I paid my way through. So you go I'm all in, it. as it were. Yeah, because first and foremost, I sit down, I have my permutations. What if I it doesn't go? What if it doesn't go as planned? Okay. You know what? Stuff happens. You understand? Yeah. You plan on the worst case scenario. You don't plan on the best case scenario. Yeah. Where I'm going, I'll te I'm telling you that, okay, this store, worst case scenario, I should be able to sell 100 naira a day. Yeah. Best case scenario, I should be able to sell 500 naira a day. Yeah. Okay, can we make it on 100 naira? If we do the if I do the analysis and I'm pretty much convinced that I can survive on 100 naira, I know mm. that I will do more than 100 naira. So I'm going in, and I know what I'm doing. Mm. Whatever you do in life, you must have a track record. I see. You must have a, a track, track record, record, and it must be demonstrable. Some people will be cringing, like, what? How do you sleep? How do I sleep? Yeah. Sound. <laughs> Did I borrow to organize party? No. No. Did I borrow to buy to marry a new wife? No. no. <laughs> Did I borrow to uh, buy a house in Banana Island? Have no. you ever failed at a business? Yeah, of course. I have had very horrible experiences. I did a farm with uh, one of my junior brothers who stole the place down. <laughs> what do you do? A family member. Oh, yeah. This is life. Is it an African thing or... It's, it's, got, it's got nothing to do with Africa. You see, it's got to do with the individual. You are you. I am me. Me, yeah. The fact that you chose to be an idiot <laughs> does not mean every other, other person... person is. Oh, that's so, that's so see, profound. Because I, I don't believe it's got nothing to do with being African. You take your decisions in life. Yeah. You have to be clear about your values. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. What do you believe in? What do you stand for? If you don't stand for something, you will fall, fall for, for anything. anything yeah. If you're very clear about your values, ab initio. Yes. I will, there yes. are things I will not do. do. Yes. Regardless of whatever happens. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. There are only two types of people in the entire world. Hmm. A tribe of good people and a tribe of bad people. Hmm. So, um, what would you, if you could go back in time to advise your younger self, what are the things you would tell the young Ayu Adeni Wali? Well, I will, I will tell him to also understand in life that there are 59 different roads to the market. Hmm. Not just one. Why 59? <laughs> Many roads. Yeah. Uh, roads to the market. I, I wish also I understood. You know, growing up, hmm. I used to think trading was for illiterates and really not so enlightened and, and, and I used to think business was dollars. You mm. know? I mean, if you were a smart guy, yeah. you got to be like a professor. And, yeah. you know, I wish I, I understood what I understood now. Mm. Then maybe some of my decisions would have been different. You'd have started a lot earlier. Maybe I would have started a lot earlier. Maybe I would have um, taken a totally different trajectory. The most important thing you must have in your life is discipline. Discipline. Second is focus. Focus. Third is a serious work ethic. Hmm. 
you know discipline then, focus serious work, work ethic. ethic then integrity 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 you must be honest you must be a decent let people know that you're a, this is who you are you're a decent human being so tell us what are the, those principles you want to leave for africans what are the the nuggets first and foremost poverty is not a disease hmm. it is a temporary state of being depending on you hmm. the biggest antidote to poverty is wealth creation you should learn to shine the light of wealth creation to that envelope of darkness that poverty represents hmm. in life as you go on whatever you do you must be disciplined let that be the anchor or starting better still the fear the love and worship of god should be the foundation upon which you build your life hmm. because once you remove god from the equation in your life you must have an anchor you must have an organizing let god be the organizing framework for your life second is discipline no matter the talent you have no matter how supremely talented you are or gifted or whatever if there is no discipline it is zilch i think it's this tire company is it pirelli or so power is nothing without control the next thing you must be clear about your values clarity of values because that is when you will not follow everybody and his cousin the next thing is make sure you develop a strong work ethic mm -hmm. not that they will tell you get to work at eight mm -hmm. you stroll in at 8 30 mm -hmm. and then by three o'clock you want to run away thank you thank you thank you very much sir. i can't say thank you enough there you have it africa um, I hope you watch all over again. I hope you learn. I hope you imbibe the lessons that you've learned here. And I hope that this principle will push you a step further to achieving your goals. Thank you very much for watching and see you uh, in the next episode. By the way, I'm just being reminded that you should like, you should subscribe and follow us on all our social media platforms. See you next time.